future of inclusive church then, and is there any need for a future? We as a group feel distinctly that there is such a need, and of course I would say that, wouldn't I? But it's not just I myself or us in inclusive church saying it, but feedback we're receiving from other people. By email and in response to our newsletters and web and to the events that we're putting on, people are saying that they want three things from an organisation such as us within the Church of England. And these are the things that people are reflecting back to us, they say that they're wanted. They want, and I'd be interested to know if you agree. Firstly, they're saying they want a, an organisation within the Church of England which engages with the decision makers in general synod and networks with other organisations to affect those changes which make the whole church more inclusive. There's no point us all just sitting around and saying we want men to do this and we want women to do that and we want us to be more open about being gay and we want this and we want that, unless we change the very structures of the Church of England and, and learn how to get to the decision makers, we won't do any of it. So people are feeding back to us that they're glad we're there so that we can affect such changes. So for example, at the last meeting of the General Synod in York, the so-called progressive groups had gone prepared this time to hear each other and to act strategically together with regard to the vote over women bishops. There was a level of joint organisation which of course was not all due to inclusive church, but in which we played an important part. Similarly, at the Lambeth Conference, we received a lot of thanks for enabling protest groups to work together where we could work together, and for being patient where we could be together without agreeing. That organisation and commitment to each other was palpable in the marketplace of the Lambeth Conference. It was visible in the Lambeth Witness newsletter. It was clear in our having a communication centre in which not only to work, but also to support one another. That's terribly important at the Lambeth Conference when you're dealing with things like a mighty wire fence which separates you off from the bishops. Things like that really affect your psyche. And if you haven't got somewhere to meet together, to pray together, to worship together, to feed and talk together, it could be pretty hard going. But we did have that this time and it was great. This level of supportive organisation was a first for progressive groups at the Lambeth Conference Fringe. And we understand to be part of our ongoing work for the future with our partner organisations. I was terribly moved. It was the first time I'd been to a Lambeth Conference and I was terribly moved to meet women particularly there um, from the States who talked to me about being among the first women to protest on behalf of women and ordination at the Lambeth Conference 20 years ago. And it was to my utter shock. Um, I was a West Country girl, so I'm not used to going to places like Canterbury, so I wasn't there. Um, it was such a shock for me to realise that women actually hadn't been permitted on campus. Never mind putting on the sort of fringe events we were putting on. Never mind being the presiding bishop of the USA. Women weren't allowed on campus. And then I also heard how um, at the last Lambeth conference, some of the effect of some of the homophobic statements was worse because organisation amongst those who agreed wasn't great. And so we really worked hard at supporting each other this time and it worked. So that's one of the things that people feed back to us they're asking for. A level of organisation whereby we can support each other and affect the decision makers within the Church of England. The second thing people feed back to us um, in support of what we're trying to do is that they're saying that they do need resources for individuals, groups and parishes with conferences, events and educational materials which support and promote an inclusive theology. And this we also see as a vital part of our work. Many people, all of us who are involved in the pastoral care of the Church of England will know, many people get snarled up in conservative theologies which don't suit their growth or spirit. But we, they don't know for many years of their life very often that there is anything else. There's a hunger for theological resources for newcomers to the church and for them and long-term members of the church to know much more about our Anglican roots about the use of the Bible, about worship, about prayer, about ethics. The, 
conservative wing of the Church of England has been absolutely brilliant at producing good educational materials for ordinary people to enjoy. Well, now it's our turn. And I want to mention three which <coughs> Inclusive Church is planning in the next year. Next year, in 2009, again this is the date for your diary, which I hope you'll write down, between the 5th and the 7th at Swanwick, the Inclusive Church National Conference will be about our use of the Bible. Many people accuse us of not using the Bible at all, um, and that's just not true. Most of us in Inclusive Church are thoroughgoing, faithful Christians who use the Bible daily and in our worship and our study in church, and we want to show some of the ways in which we do use it. The conference is going to be called Word on the Street, and we're inviting national and international theologians, amongst them Paula Gooder, um, to come and uh, speak to us. So I do hope you may be able to come to that. Then, once a month at St Martin in the Fields, I hope to be running an inclusive church book group with theologians present who've written a book on some issues of inclusive theology. Some of those books are on the back table this evening for you to look at and buy. But that's another thing I'd like you to watch out for on our website. Finally, we're trying to create our own modular course, Living Christianity, to get people talking using inclusive theological methods about the Christian life. Developing that at the moment, so again, watch the web.